بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد إخلاص لله سبحانه وتعالى as we know is one of the pillars or one of the conditions for having our deeds accepted that we do things our worship is sincerely to Allah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala not to gain fame not to be heard of not to be seen not to become wealthy etc but in fact in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I think this is well known and then the other foundation of course is mutaba or ittiba meaning to follow the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and although that foundation is very simple and we've heard it countless times for those people of ahl sunnah that listen to the scholars of today you'll hear that kalima you'll hear kalimat in fact about this these aslan adhimatan or aslan adhiman these two important foundations and with that i wanted to narrate one of the athar of the salaf a very beautiful athar i just came from uh, i just came across from Mawsu'a ibn Abi Dunya rahimahullah ta'ala and the wisdom and the benefit as it relates to ikhlas sincerity to Allah and as it relates to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty is sufficient for us if we actually practice this asl from our deen with sincerity then we'll know that Allah is sufficient and the dunya will be sufficient everything will be sufficient because when you think about it and this is not just this is from the point of aql but this is also from life experience that when you're in your strongest level of iman when your iman is really high it's as if nothing can challenge you or nothing can touch you nothing can harm you when your iman, iman is high, meaning that you have strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're putting your trust in Allah, and you're staying away from the major sins. You feel so good. But when it's the opposite, when we're involved in sins, and we know we're wrong, we know we shouldn't be doing this, we know we shouldn't be looking at this, we know we shouldn't be showing off, we know we shouldn't be cursing this person, we know we shouldn't be attacking the honor of this person, because more often than not, you know that from your fitra, you're doing something wrong. And when you know you're doing something wrong, you feel, you feel as they say, crunchy. You feel kind of bad in the, in the heart. The heart feels, you can feel it. And I know I experience this, that when I know I'm doing something wrong, and I know that Allah sees me, that shows that weakness in Iman. And that shows you also that Iman is sometimes high and sometimes it's low. And that Iman fluctuates, unlike the, those people who say it does not fluctuate. Those people who say that Iman is the same. But in fact, Iman does fluctuate. And you can even experience that on a micro level in your own life. That sometimes you feel strong and you feel like doing righteous deeds. And sometimes you feel weak and you feel lazy. And that's from the shaitan, and that's from our weak iman. But I wanted to read this beautiful narration I came across, which just shows us how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient. If we just put our trust in Allah, really put our trust in Allah. A brother just related to me that he's been attacked on a, a particular website. And that the person who attacked him is supposed to be a person of knowledge, a student of knowledge person who spent years studying in one of the, the Islamic universities and, and is supposed to be known for their fadl and known to be a person of the sunnah has just uh, attacked this person's honor in a way unbefitting of a student of knowledge as it was related to me. This shows us the importance and so I advised this particular individual who's being attacked I said hey 
we will be attacked. You're going to be attacked. Someone's always going to not like you. That's just the way it is. But the more we put our trust in Allah, as the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, that if the whole world, if, if, uh, and if they came together, meaning the whole world, they came together to benefit you with something, they will not benefit you except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. And if they came together, meaning the whole world, to harm you, they can't harm you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that. So that is, that's the shahid that we have to realize, that no matter what happens to us in this dunya, that we should suffice ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to build our iman so that we actualize that and we realize that. It's in our minds, it's in our hearts, it's on our limbs that we're remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is yakfina, is sufficient. Listen to this athar of the salaf. And I love reading athar of the salaf. We don't know if this athar is uh, sahih or not. It doesn't, uh, there's no sufficient tahqiq related to this. But we can gain immense benefit from the wisdom because it it's... Sahih in its ma'ana, in its meaning. Listen to this uh, ethem. Qala haddathana Abdurrahman ibn Salih. Qala haddathana Hussein ibn Ali ibn Ja'fi. An ma'kul ibn Ubaidillah al-Jazari. Qala kanat al-ulama idha al-taqaw tawasu bi hadhi kalimat. Wa idha ghabu kataba biha ba'dhum ila ba'd. أنه من أصلح سريرته أصلح الله علانيته ومن أصلح ما بينه وبين الله كفاه الله ما بينه وبين الناس ومن اهتم ومن اهتم بأمر آخرته كفاه الله أمر دنياه in this beautiful narration that Ma'kul ibn Ubaidillah al-Jazari rahimahullah ta'ala said he said that the scholars kanat ulama that the scholars when they met one another they used to advise one another with this advice with this kalima this kalimat and he said and if they did not see one another or they were far from one another then they used to write this this uh, letter or this athar between between them. They used to write it, you know, send letters between them to advise them. And he said that it is this that if you that if a person tries to rectify his situation, his or her situation, Allah will rectify. Uh, if, if a person tries to rectify his situation in secret, in private, you know, his, 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 his things that he does in private, then Allah will, rectif Allah will rectify his situation that's, out, that's in public. And if someone tries to rectify his situation between himself and the law, the Almighty, then Allah will suffice him, will be sufficient for him, and rectify between him and the people. And if a person puts the hereafter as something important for them, you know, they, they strive for the hereafter, then Allah will make their dunya, this life, sufficient for them. That's a beautiful narration of the Salaf, which we gain immense benefits from, which just shows us it comes to talk about Allah. It comes to strictly relying on Allah. 
and it comes to trusting on, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it comes to, to strengthening our Iman so that way Allah is sufficient for us. That only comes with Iman because when we're weak and we do something haram intentionally, then it's as if we're saying Allah is not sufficient because we know Allah is watching us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Amin. But when we try to rectify ourselves in private, what we do, we fear Allah in secret. And there's a hadith that also uh, illustrate this for us. And we should go to the hadith first and foremost. But this is a beautiful ethar of the salaf. That it shows us that if we try to rectify our situation in, in, and come closer to Allah in, our, uh, in secret, Allah will suffice for us, will be sufficient for us, and He will suffice us in our outward and how the people perceive us. Allah will raise you. Allah raises the people of knowledge in darajat. So the more we strive to seek knowledge and rectify our hearts, meaning knowledge to practice, not knowledge to say we memorize books or we met sheikh so-and-so and we studied under this sheikh and we did this. No, but knowledge that we practice, we implement in our lives. If we do that, Allah will suffice us because your iman will grow and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it also shows us that this rectification of ourselves and rectifying ourselves for the sake of Allah, with Allah, meaning doing the commandments of Allah, being obedient to Allah, thanking Allah by doing righteous deeds, things that He loves. Allah will make us, make, uh, make our dunya, our life rectified in this dunya. And if we strive for the akhirah, to, to, to attain the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice for us in this dunya. He'll give us what is sufficient for us in this dunya to attain that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil and bless us in everything uh, with, with every kind of khair. رَبَّنَا أَتَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَكِنَا ذَابَ النَّارِ And may Allah bless us to practice uh, Islam in a manner that please, pleases Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَ مُحَمِدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَسَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمَ